Dr. P.P. Devi, Professor and Dr. Samaya, Master and Dr. Dimitra Paisakar. Uh, we work together as President and Treasurer. Thank you so much. Today I will be speaking at all of you on placenta acuta spectrum disorder. I come from Sion Hospital. Can I have the next slide? Where uh, we are situated in the midst of Eastern Express Highway and Western Express Highway. We deliver about 14,000 deliveries a year. 50% of the patients are transferred to us. And every emergency we have about 40 to 50% of Caesarean section. As you are aware, the incidence of Caesarean section and repeat Caesarean section has gone up. So we have something like uh, you know placenta spectrum disorders and more unfortunately placenta accreta. My lecture will be on these points and I will go one by one through them. Uh, well, uh, placenta accreta spectrum, it was initially called as morbidly adherent placenta. But now it has been called as placenta accreta spectrum. The incidence has increased over a period of time tenfold as what it was two decades ago. And uh, we need to have a timely diagnosis and management of such cases. So we have an absence of the decidua basalis, the beta book layer, and then there is a penetration of the placenta into the myometrium and then worse it goes to the serosa. As you are aware, placenta has a connection and it has a basal plate, it has a chorionic plate and it starts developing as a as from implantation and can go up to 12 weeks period of gestation. It has a fetal and a maternal surface and this is how it looks as you can see in the slide with a chorionic plate and a basal plate. So, the chorionic plate is the fetal surface, it's a translucent membrane and it forms the stem villi and this is how the structure you can see the maternal circulation is on the lower side, the fetal circulation is at the top and we see the cotyledons, the myometrium and the residua and that's how the umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein enters into this whole system and we have the sensitive trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast. Now you can see that there is something like decidua basalis and in this slide you can see that it is formed by zona compacta and there is zona spongiosa and in between the beta book layer is there. So this is absent in placenta accreta and that is the worst scenario which we land at in such situation. So when there is absence of decidua basalis and eta work, there is varying degree of penetration of villa in the myometrium. And there are two major risk factors. One is placenta previa and a previous severe infection. These are the important major factors which cause this placenta accreta. So you have a normal placenta and on the right hand side you have the placenta previa covering, partly covering and fully covering the internal os. And these are the other uterine surgery or myoma, myomectomy or a leomyoma or a previous history of manual removal placenta from the other risk factors. So all this contribute to have and in addition to that absence of the residual basalis and the beta burglio, we have this placenta spectrum disorder. And now the incidence presently is 0.7 to 30 per 10,000 deliveries and it has risen very high, as I said, because of the excessive number of cesarean section and also previous two LSCs coming to us. Now further it is divided into accreta, increta and percreta, depending 75%, 17% and 5 to 7. This picture nicely shows us how a normal placenta is situated off to the left hand side and as it goes on penetrating, due to the absence of these two layers, we have a creta where it is up to the myometrium, in creta invading into the myometrium and going beyond the serosa is a poor creta, which is the worst scenario. So we have patients which come to us at our doorstep, either transferred or they are already registered with us. They come with heavy bleeding. If you are already aware of it, we can post an electively 
and do the surgery, but some of them do not come on time and they are just coming with baby bleeding and then they have premature birth and difficulty in separation. Well, so what we need to have a diagnosis is uh, ultrasound and if you have a patient already there in the ward admitted, you can do an MRI and further you can do all the studies. So you have to have a trans sonography but very carefully or a trans abdominal ultrasound. MRI is a basic thing which you need if you have the facility available. So you have to understand that the localization of the placenta and the diagnosis can be made very early up to 20 weeks period of gestation. So there is a loss of hypoechoic retroplacental zone. Here you can see the uterus, the placenta which is there. There are multiple vascular lacunae which I will show you in the next slide. And there is thinning of the myometrium. And as a result it might also invade into the bladder. So we have to understand that it is not only related to the entry of the placenta into the myometrium or beyond the serosa, but it can enter into the bladder. So here you find on the right hand side there is a hypoechoic plane, but in the placenta after spectrum disorder you do not have the hypoechoic plane and that will tell you that yes you are doing something very badly and this is a interesting finding which you find. There are lacunae which are there, lake lights, then which is a Swiss cheese appearance or a moth eaten appearance and this is the most reliable sign which you can come across. And here also you will find thin myometrium. These are all the pictures from my own patients. I have not taken it from any textbooks. So this is a very interesting thing which you find that there is a loss of serosa. And there is hypervascularity. If you are color doctor, if you are 3D doctor, you will find that in the placenta bed you have that typical blue and the red which the blood flow goes to the probe and goes out to the out away from the probe. And of course we have MRI and we have uh, you know the basic facility available with you. You can do uh, when the ultrasound facility confirms it or the evaluation of the posterior placenta involvement beyond into the myometric serosa or to the bladder and of course in the OB. So we need to have the delineation and the extent of the findings. These are a few pictures also where one of them is there. You can see that there are placenta lacunae and then there is a typical hypo uh, loss of hypoechoic plane which you saw the ultrasound here also you find that there is a loss of the plane in the right to lower uterine segment. So early diagnosis, timely management is the most important keyword when you are dealing with such patients. So when you diagnose them in antenatal period you have much time to take on them and give them the best treatment available so that the mother and baby is fine. So antenatal management you have to manage as how you are doing in the routine center but if you have such a patient, refer her to a tertiary center. Do not take a chance because you need to have a mental, uh, mental preparation to go for this patient for a hysterectomy. So it's very important that this patient should be hospitalized, collect the blood, see that she doesn't have any other issues, counsel the patient properly and see that she doesn't want to treat on labor or any other. And you should not have an unscheduled delivery as far as possible. So it is a multidisciplinary approach, you need an expert obstetrician, you need an expert neonatologist, you need an expert anesthetist and if necessary a urosurgeon or something in the involvement of the bladder and of course ICU management and blood bank facility. Remember to at least cost my 3 to 4 blood because you are going to do the respect on for this case in such a situation. And of course the role of antenatal corticosteroids as you are aware really need to be given and this is what you can do. So the young maturity is a timely delivery. Do not wait till 37, 38 weeks, 39, because the more you wait, it is going to wait further. So you need to understand the fetal weight, the maturity of the lungs, and then go ahead and plan a surgery, which would be the best about 34, 36 weeks. Preoperatively, all the assessment has to be done, the hemoglobin plan delivery. Optional, if you are thinking that there is a possibility of a urinary involvement, in case you have to do a complete hysterectomy and you do not want to take the ureters and you, in that case you can go ahead and do this thing. But it's your thing, you have to decide what is the best. And of course, uh, there is a balloon arterial catheterization which is the facility available in our hospital and that also can be done. So the average blood loss is 1500 to 5000 ml. You need to have preparation of uh, you know, red cell, pack cell, FFPs, cryo, platelets and all this to be ready when you are dealing with such cases. Anesthetic has to be a senior person 
you have to understand that the person also understands that he has dealt with such cases. Epidural catheter would be a better option and the readiness and for massive blood transfusion has to be there. Balloon artery catheterization can be done in our setup and it is to be done under fluoroscopic guidance. You have to prophylactically insert it and then keep it deflated. As soon as the baby is delivered out, you need to inflate the balloon and then you can go ahead and perform the bladder dissection if required and to go ahead with the hysterectomy. So all these things can be done with a timely proper intervention and planning. Well, these are the drugs to be given if to reduce the blood loss and tranexamic acid, antifibrinolytic, half an hour later if required or before can be given once after the cord clamping is done. Oxytocin has to be continued post delivery and that is a very important so that the uterus is kept contracted where you have the nuclear on the block, arbitocin and mesoprostol and all this can be done. Uterine artery ligation uh, is also a first uh, step uh, systematic with uh, vascularization and then second ligature is the utero ovarian artery ligation and then we have to understand for the need arises for the internal ileal ligation. So all these surgeries have to be done you have to have a basic anatomy understanding of the retroperitoneal space and that is very important and you have to do pineapple internal ileal ligation if you have to reduce the blood flow. So all these things have to be taken into consideration if you do not have the facility of the interventional radiology availability. The whole idea is to convert the arterial system into a pelvic system so that there is no excess of blood loss and it will help in clotting and it will also help in controlling the pelvic image. I have a small film for you to be showing. I will require two more minutes with your permission. Thank you. So here we used to do the internal ileal ligation. You remember the previously it used to be done with the black safe, but here you need to have identification of the internal ilia and the external ilia vessels. And here you can go and see the utero ovarian artery anastomosis ligation. So this is also at the first step, the second step, and you need to go. This is a very old film. Please, I apologize for that. And this is how you can do the ovarian, utero ovarian anastomosis where you need to ligate it. So that reduces the blood supply, the uterine artery, and then you go ahead with the internal ileal artery. All these things have to be done after the delivery of the baby. Then we come to the main thing. You have to keep ready the mixture. Once you cut open at the level of the infundibular pelvic ligament entry, you open up the retroperitoneal, you will identify the psoas muscle and there beneath that you will find that there are external iliac artery, there is external iliac vein, there is internal iliac artery and there it goes inside the uterine. So you need to first, this is what we are taking the two arteries and cutting and once you open up the space you will have to reflect the ureter medially on the other side and then you will be able to see, visualize so I'm just dissecting, I'm just trying to open up the space here so I can identify that I'm going at the right place at the right time and then once you identify the internal ileal artery you need to push the mixture, you just open it, open it you can see and then you feed one linen and take it out from the other side and then you can do this other thing so this is the black safe which we have used and then you just pull it out and this is just a ligation, do not cut the artery, just ligate it. Two ligatures can be uh, given with a square knot thrown on it and then you will see the blanched internal ileal artery. This is a simple procedure which can be done by anyone and a, and a, a similar person is needed. Well, the next thing is caesarean hysterectomy. It is considered to be the gold standard and it will help to reduce the maternal morbidity and mortality. So once you have a placenta accreta and it is already there in front of you, it's always better to take a financial incision or a midline incision. But when you go inside, the uterine incision should preferably be the classical one. And this is what you can do and deliver the baby out. You try to enter inside, never go to the lower uterine segment. That's what is important for you to understand. 
And once you have delivered the baby and you just go ahead uh, after the umbilical cord clamping, start suturing. You can start two of surgeons can start from above and one from below come in the center. And as you are doing the surgery, the bleeding will be reduced. And then you go ahead to perform a total hysterectomy. If not, at least subtotal hysterectomy, but that's very risky. And you have to remove that whole placental bed along with up till going down to the vaginal wall. And that is the expertise you require. This is the picture which you can see how the placenta looks at the lower uterine segment. And it is really eroding into the myometrin and you can see the vascularity there. And this is a post-operative picture of a hysterectomy specimen. Here you can see how the placenta is still there and this is how the fundus and the lower uterine segment can be assessed. This is another special specimen of an obstetric hysterectomy done in our hospital. So, uh, well, if the bladder invasion is confirmed, you need to intentionally cut the bladder. It's very important. And then call the urologist along with them. You always suture or you can suture on your side. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, there are uh, other slides also, but there is one triple key procedure which has been mentioned, and that is a U bench sharing procedure. It's having a proper localization of the ultrasound of the placenta. The superior is the pelvic devascularization to be done with an intra arterial balloon catheterization and the placental non removal with an end block myometrial excision. Neonatal outcome is most important, and there are certain complications we have to note of the neonates. This is the deadly disease of Africa. This is a very important thing. Delayed referral, delayed emergency, delayed decision of our hysterectomy, deficiency of time availability, deficiency of blood and blood products, ICU beds, and multidisciplinary senior teams is a very important deadly disease of Africa. Remember, you don't fall into this trap. I have been taught with my seniors, Dr. Poitian, Dr. P. Krishna, sir, Dr. Parker, sir, and he, they used to always tell me, be safe, be sure of what you are doing, be swift in your surgery, be sound in your clinical and surgical skills, do surgery relentlessly and bloodless. And it's very important that you have a lion's heart, ladies from the eagle's eyes, good hand dexterity, and a dober man's suspicion when you are dealing with placenta or beta spectrum disorder. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I'm sure you've covered all the points. Of course, uh, placenta, we can even discuss it for more than half a day. There's so much.